Good morning, YouTube, Booktube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd stop by and say good morning. It's a new week, a new month. My wife just left to do errands, and I thought I'd just make a short video. I'm not really in the mood to make videos these days. I don't know. It's kind of like you want every video to be a perfect, perfect expression of your book life and your intellectual life, your spiritual life. And lately I just kind of feel kind of blah. <laughs> but today is February the 2nd. 2022 it is 9:09 in the morning it is snowing it is raining it is cold it is just plain ugly michigan winter weather uh, i always find it surprising that some people love cold weather they love snow they love this kind of weather and to me i just i i don't understand it so today is February the 2nd. It is a Wednesday morning. It is 9.10 now. As is my habit, I'm writing in my paper diary. I'm on page 108 this morning for the year 2022. And uh, I just thought I'd like to stop by, say, hope you're having a good reading week. You had, you had a good weekend. This is a Wednesday. We're coming to the middle of the week, and uh, February is a short month, so that's kind of nice. So yesterday, I got two books in the mail. I thought I'd show those first of all. I got this book. Um, it's a New York Review book classics original. I think it's called The Silent Terry by Antonio de ben Benete. I think it's, by, it's, it's been translated out of Spanish by Esther Allen. I came across this because I had been reading and I found, I went through my live journal Crooked Fingers, and I found out that I was reading this book, I think in April or May of 19, no, 2017. It was this book by the same writer, Zuma, Z Zuma, by Antonio de Biente. And uh, so what I, I got this out, and I've been trying to read start reading where I left off I think I might have finished this but I can't remember but I know I, I was looking at my archives and crooked fingers you can go back and you type in I typed in this book and it showed up I was reading it in May or April of 2017 so I started reading it's a very short little book you could probably read it in probably one afternoon if you wanted to so it's kind of like a reread, and then I found out that the uh, New York Review of Basics was pu publishing this a re translation of his other book, The Silent Terry. It says that The Silent Terry takes place in a nameless Latin American city during the early 1950s. A young man employed in middle management and entertains an ambition to write a book of some sort. But first he must establish the necessary precondition, which the crowded and noisy industrialized city always denies him. However, often he and his mother and wife move in in search of it. He thinks of embarking on his writing career with something simple, a detective novel, and ponders the possibility of choosing a victim among the people he knows and planning a crime as if he himself were the killer. That way he hopes his book might finally begin to take shape. The solitary along with Zuma and the Suicides is one of three thematically linked novels by D. Bidente that have come to be known as the Trilogy of Expectation. 
Now they might do the the New York Review might do that other one, the suicides. I don't I haven't read or seen anything. After the dedication to the victims of expectation and Zuma together they can constitute in Juan Jose Sartre's words one of the mo one of the cultivating moments of twentieth century century narrative fiction in Spanish. So I got that in the mail. I already had this one, so now I got two books. But I enjoy, I really like Zuma. I like rereading it. It's, and I also got this book in the mail along with that one. This is Jonathan Edwards and Deification, Reconciling Theos and the Reformed Tradition by James R. Saladin. As you all know, I'm a, an Edwardian. I have since, oh, for many, many years, I've been reading the writings of Jonathan Edwards, the great American revivalist, theologian, minister of, uh, was it early 19th, early, it's probably 19, uh, 19th century? American. So I got that in the mail. I've been reading that last night and this morning for devotions. I actually got out this the the selections from the unpublished writings of Jonathan Edwards. I was reading last night his treatise on grace in here. Treatise on grace. So, also, I, I have been reading, I showed you this book in context Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and the World by Mark O'Keefe. And reading uh, The Dark Knight and the Collected Works of St. John of the Cross. Yeah, I've been reading that pretty off and on. And then I've been reading, I showed you this, The Cross of Jesus by Louis Chardin. He lived from 1595, he was born and he died in 1651, was a Dominican priest, mystic, and theologian. The Cross of Jesus is his masterpiece and translated into French, the dialogues of St. Catherine of Seneca. Senna. So yeah, I've been reading, I've been reading these books primarily, and I also still been reading Natalie Kohlberg's Long Quiet Highway, Waking Up in America. It's a memoir about her becoming a writer and a practicing Zen Buddhist, and still reading uh, the manuscript found in Saragossa by John, Jean, Jan Polarnik. This is translated uh, Polish by Ian McLean, McLean. So these are the kind of things I read when I'm not falling asleep or writing in my diary or looking at videos and booktube. I volunteered at the Book Nook, the library used bookstore Monday, and I picked this book up for three dollars. It's called, it's by Peter Whitfield, Cities of the World, A History in Maps. It's just maps of major cities, like there's a, you know, older maps of Boston, and then they got like uh, maps of De these are just maps of Delhi, you know, older maps. Then they're oh, Naples, you know, maps. It's a history, cities of the world, a history in maps, and uh, you know, it was only three dollars, and I like maps and. So I grabbed it, you know, the map of Rome. So I picked up for three dollars. 
I got a whole stacks of used books from thrift stores, Blue Stockings bookstore, bookshop, and uh, I got books coming in the mail, a couple of books. So yeah, just, but this morning I'm reading John Edwards on deification and rereading Zuma by Antonio Antonio de Bente, I can't remember. And reading In Context, St. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and The World. Reading The Dark Night. Reading The Manuscript Found in Saragossa. I really like this. It's kind of macabre. It's kind of, kind of, uh, like, but it's very interesting. And I read this, The Long Quiet Highway, Waking Up in America, a memoir by Natalie Goldberg. And reading some French mysticism. Writing in my paper diary. Watching the birds, watching the snow. Just trying to not freak out, flip out. Trying to stay positive in this world that seems to be going nuts. So that's it. Not much else. Like I said, it's a Wednesday. I'll probably read, I'll probably go down and take a nap. I got up at 3.30, this pain in my right leg. My, uh, my skeleton, ske that word is called S-C-I-A-T-I-C-A -I -I this statica in my leg I've been really tormented by that and then I got the buzzing in my ear the, the tinnitus tetanus no not that tetanus tinnitus so you know I got all these afflictions of old age and I tend to be a melancholy person so we wake up in the morning and have breakfast and have devotions and pray and just seek to live a quiet, simple Christian life. So I hope you're having a good week. Do pray that you are vaccinated, got your booster, that you're not sick, that you're wearing a mask, wash your hands, just social distancing. I don't think we're ever going to get out of this pestilence, this plague. I think that's the new world we live in. And, you know, when I was growing up, it was uh, fret the the fear of nuclear war between Russia and United States. Now we have the same kind of thing. When I was growing up, we were we had to take drills of bomb shelters and back there in the 60s and the Cold War. And, and then you had the rise of it, Islam and terrorism. And now you have the plagues and you got threat of nuclear war between Russia and the United States again. The rise of white supremacy and white extremists and people wanting to overthrow the government and then you got all, you know, I was thinking about all the poor college kids who looked forward to going to college after high school and getting an education and getting on in with life and now we got schools are closing and <clears throat> life just seems to have one thing after another but maybe that's just the history of mankind. So, still reading the Bible. I was reading this morning, I was looking at Philippians. I suppose I'll close with Philippians. This verse came to my mind this morning and I wrote it in my diary and I thought I'll just read it to you. It says in Philippians, let me see here, Philippians chapter 3.
I think that was it, yeah. Well, chapter 4. He says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true... Wait a minute. No, starting in verse 2. I implore... Let me know. Start at verse 3 of chapter 4 of Philippians. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel with Clement, also West and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what came to my mind. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So, I hope you have a good week. I'll show those thrift store books, used books, in a future video. Once I start feeling better, more alert, more awake, not seeking uh, perfection, Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Stay warm. Stay safe. Until next time. Bye.